So what you're seeing right now on my screen is the visual designer. And this is what we've been demoing a lot in our prior webinars. It is what we believe is the ideal way of building new Web 2.0 applications with RPG. And it's also the tool that you're going to use to enhance your converted application. So I'm going to start by clicking the Convert button. And what I need at this point is the DDS source file name, the library, and a member name of the green screen display file that I'm going to convert. So in this case, I'm going to convert my product maintenance display file. At this point, I can also select a theme right here. So the themes are very important. They're basically your settings and rules on how the conversion is going to handle the various things that it encounters in your display files. A theme will also define things like default fonts, colors, CSS classes. So currently, our environment is shipped with two themes. And um, I've selected the enhanced theme right here. And this particular one, this particular theme is just going to be a little bit more aggressive in trying to create automated enhancements. So now I simply click the Convert button. And it's now converting my display file. That process takes maybe a few seconds. So now it is all done, and the display file converted successfully. I do have some informational messages here. So in this case, there are two informational messages, uh, but there's really nothing to worry about. The keywords print and the keywords blink are not applicable in a browser environment. And that is OK. As long as the application works, I don't really care if the cursor is going to blink or not. But you may, from time to time, see other types of messages where you do have to take some corrective action. For example, a common message you may see might tell you that a reference file was not found. And so you may need to go and adjust your library list, which you can do by going onto the toolbar right here and clicking the library list button right here. And you get a little dialog where you can adjust your library list, and then you can go ahead and reconvert again. So here we have uh, our converted rich display file. And at this point, we no longer need our original green screen display file because we have a new rich display file which preserves all of the functionality of the original. So I have my record formats listed on the right hand side. So I have my product subfile, my product detail screen, and my category selection window. So each one of these formats is made up of widgets. So there's widgets like grids, buttons, text boxes, and drop downs. And the widgets in turn are bound to fields and indicators through their properties. There's a nice property a window on the right hand side that you can uh, scroll through. So for example, if I click on the grid component, I'm going to see uh, various properties. And if I look at the subfile properties, like display file, display control, display subfile, display control record, clear subfile, subfile size, you'll see that those are bound to indicators. In this case, you can see that indicators 70 and 71 are being used to control this information. And if we look at uh, an output widget within the subfile. Let's look at this particular one right here. You'll see that its value, so the value property, is also bound, and it's bound to a variable, to a field. And all of the data type information came through and uh, from the original green screen display file, and it's been preserved. So in this case, it's a character field. The length is 30. Uh, this may have also been a reference field that would also just come through. By the way, if I wanted to move or change this particular field in any way, you will notice that uh, all of that is automatically reflected to all of the subfile rows in, in the subfile. All right, now let's take a quick look at buttons. So here's a button. Um, it's an exit button, but really it represents a function key. It represents my F3 function key in the original program. So in the original program, F3 was assigned to indicator O3, and this has been carried over to the response property in our rich display file. Now, in your programs, you may or may not be assigning indicators to your function keys. You may be using an alternate method like the INFDS, information data structure, or another method like using the special INK indicators. It really doesn't matter what you use. All of these methods are supported in Profound UI, and there's going to be an equivalent property somewhere that handles it within the rich display file. 
Another important thing to note is that there's also on this button a shortcut key property, which has been assigned to F3. And this allows the end user to still use the keyboard when they use the application. So we looked at our rich display file a little bit. And let's see, what is it going to take to get it running? So I'm not going to make any enhancements at this point, any additional enhancements other than, the, uh, other than what the conversion process has, re has already done. And I'm going to show you steps involved uh, to compile it, save it, compile it, and get it running. So first thing I need to do is save the display file. I'm going to click the Save button. And I'm going to keep the same source number, but I don't want to override my original green screen display file. So I'm going to put it into a different library. And for me, the default is weblib. So I'm going to click Save. And so the same member name, but it's going to a different library. That's saved. Next step is to compile. I'm going to click Compile. And I'm going to compile this particular display file into the weblib library. So now we're done with the display file. The next step is to add the handler to the RPG program. So I'm going to go to my RPG editor and open up the RPG program. So typically, adding a handler is just one line of code. In this case, I'm also going to add a conditional directive, which will allow me to compile for both the green screen and the web without having to create duplicates of my source member. So I'm going to be use, I'm going to use the same source member for both the web application and the existing green, green screen applications. And I'm not going to change the process that I use now to work with and compile my green screen. So here's what that looks like. Okay, I'm done. That was not painful at all. I'm going to save. And in fact, whether the program is 100 lines of code or 10,000 lines of code, the process for adding the handler is the same. Now let me show you how to compile this program for the web. Obviously, compiling it for the green screen, you take the same step as you did before. For the web, I want to define the web parameter. So I'm going to go to the uh, PDM session and show you how that's done. So I'm going to be working with this prod MNTR program. I'm going to put a 14 on it, and then I'm going to prompt it. I'm going to have it go to a different library called weblib. And I'm going to go to the define parameter. I'm going to put web. And when I put web on there, that ensures that the handler is being picked up. And I'm going to hit enter. And the compile process will kick off. And it's done. Now, you are probably just as lazy as I am or some of you are, and I'm a little lazy, and so I don't want to go through this process every time. So what I've done is I created a quick uh, shortcut option. I've created a user-defined option called WB, and that's just basically taking the same command that I already puts the define web in there and automatically takes it to the right library. So for me, whenever I compile something, I just put WB and I hit Enter, and the compile process kicks off. Also, quick note, if you don't have open access and you're going to be using the preprocessor, maybe, maybe because you're in 5.3 or 5.4 or you're just in a trial version of Profound UI and you haven't got open access yet, the command simply varies a little bit, but the basic process is exactly the same. So now I'm ready to launch my application. And I'm going to launch this as an anonymous program. I intentionally registered this program as anonymous so I don't have to uh, sign on every time that I that I run it. Oh, you know what? I think I made a little error. And before I compile this, I never modified my library list. So this still says proglib, and that means it picked up the original green screen display file. And that's why I'm getting an error right now. Really, what should have happened is I should have modified my library list first to pick up on the display file that I've created. Let me try this again. And we'll try this. So here's the running application. So the application, out of the box, the functionality is going to be very similar to the original green screen.
But there are a few differences uh, or a few nice automatic enhancements that I can show you right away. And they kind of relate to the subfile. So the first one that I want to show you is that you can click on any column to sort the information. So here I'm sorting either in ascending or descending order by product name. I can do the same thing with product ID, price, quantity, etc. If I go into the change mode and, and pull up the prompt window, I get the same type of effect with um, my categories. I can sort them. And the window here is draggable as well. Now you may have noticed that in addition to sorting, I'm also using a real scroll bar. So I'm not really paging uh, like I did with refacing. I'm not really paging one screen at a time. I can go from the very top to the very bottom uh, uh, of these records here. And I can do this here in the prompt window. I can also do this with my main product subfile. And my product subfile has 700 some records and I'm scrolling all the way down pretty much immediately. 